Europe is facing a migration crisis for a few years now and this uh, episode is actually in the news right now since Turkey opened the borders to let some refugees come in. To discuss this situation now we have here with us one of the members of the FDP party from Renew Europe, he's uh, Jan Christoph Odjen, and we will discuss this situation. Basically also the president of Turkey, Erdogan, he actually came yesterday to Brussels to have a meeting with the president of the European Council, with Charles Michel. What do we know from this meeting? What, what happened? What was the outcome of it? But in fact, there's no real outcome. Uh, they agreed to disagree um, and we as Europeans, we urge the Turkish authorities uh, to stick to the deal uh, we once made with Turkey uh, and not to open the borders because this is contrary to what we discussed before. When would this happen? I mean, for all those at home that they didn't know that actually there was an agreement with Turkey when it comes to borders, what was exactly, what is this that uh, deal says exactly? In 2015, um, we as Europeans, we said, okay, we need you, Turkey, um, to solve the crisis in Syria because there were so many refugees coming from Syria. Um, and we accepted to give 6 billion euros uh, to Turkey uh, to invest it to help the refugees and uh, Turkey accepted to uh, host the refugees in camps near the Syrian border. And now the Turkish authorities decided to end this deal, perhaps, we don't know really, uh, but to open the borders and send refugees to Europe. So these refugees now are entering uh, the EU through Greece. What is the EU doing to deal with this conflict, to make sure that we are in, uh, all together trying to help those people, but at the same time to regulate this, this migration, this new number of refugees coming to the EU? First of all, we stand in full solidarity with Greece uh, and the Greece people. Um, Greece on its own can handle the situation. That's uh, for me fully clear. Uh, 20,000 people uh, coming to the Turkish-Greek border, uh, the Tur uh, Greek authorities cannot handle this. Therefore, um, the European U Union decided to send um, people from Frontex and from EASO, first to protect the border, um, but then to help as well uh, to do the asylum procedures because uh, we, the, Turk the Greek authorities, don't have enough capacity to handle all these people. All these people that they are coming, that we see now in the news every day, are they all coming from Syria or they are also coming from any other countries nearby? Uh, honestly, they are coming randomly from uh, different countries. There are Syrians, there are refugees from Syria, but there are lots of Afghans, there are Pakistani people. Uh, these are people um, that are sent to the Greek-Turkish border by the Turkish authorities. So uh, randomly they uh, take them, they put them into buses and send them uh, to the border to put pressure on the European Union. Greece already, in it's in silence, it has already a lot of numbers of refugees from Syria that they've been there for already a few years now. How is the EU dealing with, uh, with them? Because they don't, we don't speak anymore about the refugees uh, centers and, and camps that they are set in the Greek islands. Who is taking care of them? The NGOs, Greece, the member states, the EU? Normally it should be the Greek authorities, but honestly the situation uh, from a humanitarian perspective on the Greek islands is disastrous. Uh, so from my point of view, we have to help uh, the Greek people first to uh, evacuate these people uh, uh, to the uh, center country, Greek center country, not on the islands. And then we have to help the Greek authorities to do uh, clear asylum procedures to, uh, in order to know if they're asylum seekers or if they're not. Uh, but at this moment, nobody talks about Moria and, uh, and Lesbos, but we, will ha we have to help them. And especially uh, for the kids on these islands, it, it is a disastrous situation. And I hope that uh, many member states uh, in the European Union accept to take, especially unaccompanied minors, uh, and take them into other countries. How does the asylum process work? Any of those refugees who is there, maybe even family with children, and people also that they have studies that they just left their country because they are they're escaping from the situation, mm. which is the asylum process? Uh, does, is the, the member states who wants to decide which is the asylum process to accommodate these refugees, mm. or there is an EU procedure system that can be applied? Yeah, unfortunately, we ha don't have a real EU system. Uh, it's uh, up to the laws in the member states. Uh, and they do it sometimes better, sometimes worse. Uh, and the situation in Greek is not so in Greece is not so good. Um, uh, so uh, what we want is Renew Europe, um, and therefore we drafted uh, a Renew Europe vision uh, on migration policies. Um, uh, what we want is a real EU asylum system uh, with um, uh, clear uh, measures 
how to uh, act when there are people coming uh, that apply for asylum. We indeed presented this document last month. I have a copy here and you can find it in the Renew Europe uh, website. Uh, we decided uh, as Renew Europe, uh, along with the Vice President Malik Asmani, you are the co-author of this document, mm -hmm. to present which are the Renew Europe priorities and what we do expect from uh, the Commission and the Council to actually create a migration uh, pact. Which other points are collected in this document? Uh for us, it's important at this stage uh, that the Commission comes up very quickly uh, with a new proposal for a pact on uh, migration. What we want uh, is to have, on the one hand, a clear rule of law and clear rules um, how to proceed with asylum seekers. On the other hand, we have a, an important humanitarian dimension because you cannot think uh, a refugee crisis without, uh, a, without the core values of the European uh, Union. So humanitarian uh, principles are very, very important. Um, there is the question of uh, the external dimension of migration. So how can we act with uh, other countries, countries of origin, countries of, uh, uh, of transit? But what we need at the end um, uh, is an asylum system in the European Union uh, where uh, all the countries act kind of the same way uh, and with not this uh, disproportional system as we have at the moment. Going back to the conflict with the Greek and Turkish border, uh, this afternoon in plenary here in Brussels in the European Parliament, mm -hmm. the members will discuss this uh, openly. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the expectations of this debate? I mean, yourself, you're going to be speaking there, so stay mm -hmm. tuned to our website and to our Renew Europe social media because we will be checking your speech. What will you ask to the Commission, to, to the Council or to the other members to do? First of all, the most important is to discuss with Turkey uh, because, uh, I mean, we don't accept blackmailing, but uh, we need the Turkish uh, authorities on the other hand. Uh, so what we need is an updated EU-Turkey deal. And what we need is uh, uh, to help in Syria as well uh, because uh, the situation we have now is, um, uh, is the situation because uh, the Turkish authorities fear that there are one, more mi one million more migrants coming from Syria to, uh, to Turkey. So we need a, a solution for the humanitarian crisis we have in Idlib and in northern uh, Syria. I will ask uh, the European Commission um, to urge the UNHCR to have a, um, a conference uh, to help this humanitarian crisis in northern Syria. Uh, this will help at the end the Turkish authorities as well. Thank you, Her Ogen, and all of you at home, stay tuned because this afternoon we will have the debate on the Turkish Greek border here in the European Parliament, and we will also discuss the MFF, the EU budget for the upcoming years. So we have a lot of content for you coming up right now. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you.